Hi guys, welcome back to Origami Twist. My name's Jen and surprise, today is craft room tour day. I'm so excited. After that giant declutter and purge and video I made on purging system, um, I'll link all of it below so you can go and check it out if you're in a decluttering mood. And uh, this is my after and I am so excited. Now I do wanna put in here before I uh, get going with the tour, that this is actually a collab and uh, one of the people I su I'm subscribed to and she's a viewer of my channel, we decided to do a collab because she's recently done a purge as well and she decided to do her craft room tour. So this is not one, it's two craft room tours in one and the link to that will be down below so you can go and check that out and uh, subscribe to her channel. She, her name is, or her, her channel name is Stellar Crafts by Pam. And hi Pam, if you're watching, and uh, thanks for doing a collab with me. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy her video as well as mine. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to give you a general overview of the whole space inside the drawers and everything. That's my favorite part of the uh, organization or the craft room tour process is looking in the drawers. <laughs> something really exciting about checking out how people organize their stuff. And uh, so I'll, I'll go through all of it. And if you have any further questions or would like to see something in more detail or my theory behind things, please let me know in the comments below. Please like this video if you enjoy craft room tours as much as I do. And uh, please subscribe as well. I have lots more videos coming up in the near future. Okay, let's start on top of the bookcase. This whole bookcase that is sitting on top of these two drawer systems, these are sort of like metal filing cabinets, but for like a commercial space. Uh, the file, ca the, um, sorry, the bookcase ha houses all of my paper. Now, if you saw my craft room tour 2015, you'll know that I had more paper than this before. And it didn't, well, I sort of did. I also had my ink stored in here, so it's sort of, partial because I, I did acquire some new paper, but regardless, um, I now have all my paper in one space. It was split up before. And I'm really, really pleased with that because there's nothing worse than wanting something and having to go rifling through everything trying to find it. So now it's all in one place. Now up top, I've got my Project Life stuff all together. This one box now houses all my Project Life stuff because of my declutter. I got rid of a lot, which is makes me really happy because now everything in there is something I love and something I plan to actually use or at least use for inspiration and then move on to someone else. I've got some different paper pads and things to like work surfaces here up on top and then this top row is thanks to Totally Tiffany. Now I talk a lot about Tiffany in and Tiffany's channel and her business in my Craft Room Tour 2015. So if you're curious at all about her system, um, please go and check that out. She's really neat and she has a lot of great ideas. Um, but this is actually one of her ideas. Sorting all of your paper by color, at least all of your plain paper by color. And I also have it done by size as well, but you'll notice that my eight and a half by 11s and my 12 by 12s are stored next to each other. And this is totally by design. If I decide that I need something in red or I need to sort of flip through and find the right color, it's super easy to locate and it makes crafting so, so much easier. Now you'll notice that all of my paper is stored vertically except for my six by six color, uh, six by six pads. And the reason for that is that if I want a specific color, most of the time I've only got one or two sheets of the same color. So rather than having to pull a whole stack off the shelf, get the paper out and then put it all back neatly onto the shelf, I can just flip through, pull it out. Sometimes one comes out and you have to wiggle it back in, but it is so much easier to access and to put things away after. And it just, it's so much less complicated. You know, the craft room stores have the horizontal storage and, but that's because they've got 45 of the exact same paper on that shelf. And I just find that this is way easier than the way I used to store it, which was horizontally. I've got all of my origami stuff off to the side, again, in little packets, but in um, color order. 
inside the color order. I know some of you are probably going, but what if I've got paper from different companies? I have folders that I have labeled with the names of the color as well as the brand so that if for my blog, for example, if I want to use a color that I can then um, share with people so they can get the same color, it's easily accessible, but it's still in the color families. So I've put those into these folders. Um, if you're in Australia, like I am, I bought those at Kmart. It was a while ago, so I'm not sure if they still carry them, but a lot of companies sell these 12 by 12 pouches. Or you could even use a manila folder, to be honest. It's just, just something to keep them together and labeled. Okay, and then further down, you've got white, black, neutrals, etc. This is plain paper that is like uh, printer paper weight, and I use this a lot for my videos with origami. And then oh, all the way to the right, I've got specialty papers. So watercolor paper and um, specialty photo paper, that sort of thing. On the bottom, whoops, sorry, there's a strap to my camera. On the bottom, I've got all of my patterned paper. And that's organized in a couple of different ways. Again, it's very similar to Tiffany's uh, system. And I have them by topic. So if I'm scrapbooking, like I do a lot of nature type uh, scrapbooking, especially my husband is a, um, he's an extreme sports enthusiast. And so a lot of the time I'll be pulling out, you know, paper for nature to scrapbook stuff for him. Old fashioned and domestic. I like uh, holidays, meaning um, going on trips. So Disney World, etc., And uh, that sort of thing. So that's all organized like that. And this is just on a piece of, you know, like that's the back of a paper pad. And I've made the little tabs out of some scrap paper. So if you're purging and you're getting rid of scrap paper, make your little tabbies first before you get rid of your paper. Uh, let's see. Here I've got all of my patterned paper that's color themed. So polka dots and stripes and whatnot. I go with the dominant color. So it's, it doesn't always, like this one has multiple colors, but I put this in the pink section, even though it's got other colors in it. I go with the color that I'm likely to use. So again, that's totally up to your personal taste as far as what goes in what section. It's just so you can find it again, really. Uh, I've got some plain paper here, but that's for a specific project. So again, it's organized together. And then paper pads. My rule with paper pads is once I have used the themed stuff enough that I'm down to paper that, you know, I might use one sheet for one project rather than using 10 sheets for a scrapbook, for example, uh, then I'll break it up and put it into this system over here. But until then, I like to keep it together because they're intentionally coordinated. So love, love, love this blue citrus stack I bought over Christmas, DCWV. Got that at Michael's in the States while we were at, on holidays uh, visiting my family. Love that stack. Okay, to the right I've got uh, 12 by 12 sticker sheets as well as templates and stencils. And I store those with my paper because they are skinny like paper and similarly shaped, obviously, 12 by 12 stencils. Um, our 12 by 12 size. So all of that is just organized in there because it fits really nicely. And I have found that's easy access as well. When I'm, you know, going to craft, I can just spin around, grab a stencil, use it, put it away. I've got some six by 12 paper a friend gave me a few years ago and I'm, I'm slowly working through it. I use this a lot for my YouTube videos because they're, you know, it's cut down to size. Once these are gone, however, I, I will probably keep all of my papers in 12 by 12s, so I'll probably just remove that and it'll be a nice open space. Or I might get more paper, you never know. <laughs> um, up here I've got some ch chipboard scraps and underneath is six by six paper pads. Now you'll notice I don't have those vertical and the reasoning for that is when I use six by six pads, I tend to pull the whole thing out and just flip through it. They're not organized in any particular way because it's a short stack. It, it works for me. If you've got a lot more than that, storing them vertically might make more sense for you. And then some just photo paper, which I use for crafting a lot. Okay, there's the paper section. Now I'll get into the drawers in a minute, but before I do, 
we'll come over here and have a look at the top of this desk. Now my theory on organization for craft spaces is to have as much open space to work on as possible. When I craft, I make a massive, massive mess. And it's nice to have that, that space so that you can place something over on the table and then put something else over here and spread out. Um, so therefore, having all of this stuff on top of the desk is not my ideal situation. However, I have a fairly small space to work with. I just have this big desk and of course the cabinets and bookcase and that's my whole space. So I've had to compromise a little bit when it comes to having things on top of the desk. Um, at some stage, if I have a bigger space, I will definitely be removing that from the top as I prefer to have a big open space. Now, not everyone feels that way. And so, you know, th if this works for you, that's what matters. It's what works for you because uh, you're the one doing the crafting, you know. So, um, yeah, with that, that's my philosophy on big open space. Now, over here on the left, it's sort of um, administrative type stuff. I've got... Um, ideas that I've clipped out of magazines and different, that one's labeled reference. You can see we've, I've got all kinds of articles. I've got different uh, page ideas. Um, this, that's pagemaps.com. It's a great website. And uh, underneath I've got my color and my stamp catalogs and, and a die cutting catalog. Now, I have videos on my old system. I'm still using the same system, but the items that are in the system have totally changed. So if you'd like to see that once I update it, um, I haven't updated it since the purge, but I will be doing that shortly. Please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to do that. But basically that system is just a way of organizing um, color, which all of my color stuff is in here and stamps, which I've got stored down there. It's storing it in a book, so you don't have to go rifling through all your stuff to find things. You can kind of go shopping in the catalog and then it references where it's located in your craft space. That has been a lifesaver for me. So if you're interested, that's a totally Tiffany thing as well. If you're interested, let me know. Uh, let's see, we've got tiny little fun pens and things for doing line drawings in there. I'm not sure if that's the final resting place for that, but it is what it is, that's where it is right now. I've got some reference books here. And my Big Shot is stored up here. And the reason for that is that I've nice, got a nice clean space in front of it. When I'm ready to use it, I pull it off, use it, and put it back so fast. And it makes, having it right out like that makes it so I use it more often. And I used to have it on top of a set of drawers down here on the right, that worked great as well because again, I could just pick it up, put it on the table, put it back down again. So my, my craft room is all about functionality. Just about all of my organizational life is about functionality. That's the magnetic platform that goes with that and it is magnetized to the little shelf there. Scrapbooking stuff underneath, works in progress. I've got my scoreboard here. If any of you have this, you know how frustrating it is to store, but it's working right there for now, so, and it's easy to get out as well. Oh, sorry, move the chair. I love this. I did this just after I did the purging. It is an organized system for all of my scrapbooking works in progress, and I've just basically sorted everything out and put it into plastic folders so that when I want to work on one particular project, pull it out, use it and put it back after. Then when I'm done, I can get rid of all of the excess. And up top, I'll actually pull that down in a minute, but over here I've got color. So we'll do the drawers first. I still have all of the Stampin' Up! stamp pads from a couple of years ago, and I've got them all organized and stamped onto little color reference charts, as well as having them in the color catalog. And I've organized them slightly differently than I used to. They used to be in the Stampin' Up! color families, and now they are organized by rainbow order. So pinks and reds, it's kind of boring, but you get the idea, oranges, yellows, and greens. So we've got blues in here, a lot of Stampin' Up! blues. 
and then purples, grays, and browns, and that sort of thing in the back. Up top, I've got other brands of ink, and I've got so I've got Distress Ink. Now it's four deep, and I don't that doesn't bother me at all because it's all in the color catalog. So if I want to reference a particular color, I've got it stamped out, so I know what it looks like stamped as well, which is a another benefit of the color catalog. Got chalk ink and brilliance ink and stamp and scrub, which is the cleaner. Some close to my heart stamp pads down there. And the last two sections are more about artist mediums. So we've got Mud Podge, we've got Gesso, we've got more Mod Podge, etc. Gel medium. So different things that you might mix with color. And all of my go-to basic blacks. So stays on Memento Tuxedo Black, Stampin' Up Black, and some different uh, like Kaiser card, cardstock fan deck, and close to my heart fan deck, as well as some color swatches that I made with my Stampin' Up inks. Now this has been very helpful. All right, I'll pull that down for you. This is a close to my heart box, and it has all of my creative colors. So things like color sprays, pigments, stickles, liquid pearls, watercolor pencils, and all of my Stampin' Up! reinkers all in one place. I've also got Pearlex in here in old and new packaging and the color reference chart for the Pearlex as well. Now I will be doing a video on Pearlex pigments, so if that's something you're interested in, it's coming up soon. Um, not much to say about that except that when I'm using these products I like to be able to pick and choose so they work great having them in a box. Again, it's all about functionality. And Tiffany has a slightly different way of storing this, however she caters more towards people who have a lot more than I do. And I used to have a lot more than I do now and I so I used her systems for that in the past but now all of it fits in one box. So. That's what I do, Don't keep it all in the same box. All right, so I've showed you the paper as well as what's on top of the desk. Now let's go into the drawers and then that will be the whole thing. Now I've set this up again for functionality and I, again, I have a lot less than I used to. I used to have another entire stack of that and then I had boxes with scrapbooking stuff and I've changed how that works. So. I think I'll start on the right hand side and go through these little drawers. The top drawer is my VersaColor Cubes and if you're wondering what the swatches of that look like I actually have a video of that so I'll put that either in the upper right hand corner or down in the description box so you can check that out. Uh, this is one of two Brad drawers. Again I, I've actually changed up the way I do it because again I have less than I used to so I'm just putting them all in one place now. And looks like I need to stick that down better, but more brads and sequins in there as well. And this is just tackle boxes. I bought these at Kmart from Sport Fisher. If anybody in Australia is looking for a good brad box, these are perfect. Uh, heat embossing materials, so all of my heat embossing powders as well as the ink that's used with them, Versamark. First drawer of stamps. Now you'll notice I put a little space next to it. That's because once I get it into my stamp catalog, I'll actually have uh, numbers that are corresponding to the actual drawer. Drawer number two of stamps. The next drawer. And this one is blank cards and envelopes. I find it really nice to have them right at hand. That's the only paper that besides my teabag folding tiles that isn't in the other organization. More stamps. The only reason that interrupts it is because it's actually a deeper drawer. So it's sort of just the way it works uh, size-wise for this particular drawer setup. More stamps, more stamps, more stamps. And in the bottom, I've got one big stamp as well as my old school color ink, dye ink color cubes from Stampin' Up. 
I don't know if they make them like this anymore, but I used to be a demonstrator way back in the day, and they are really great for taking to crops and scrapbooking night. Okay, over next to all of this stuff, I've got my everyday drawer, which houses everything that you could possibly need. And I explained this in my, uh, let's see, it was my how to store craft supplies in a small apartment or space. And I suggested that when you go put everything in, in boxes or containers or whatnot, that you have a, I use these all the time box, so that every time you craft, you pull that out and then you pull out the specific items. So this is my everyday box, if you will, and in, in the in drawer form, of course. Um, but it's it's your scissors and your glues and your, you know, basically everything that you could possibly need tool-wise that you would use a lot. Scalpel or exact, it's called an exacto knife in the States. Uh, little clips to hold things together while they're drying. Uh, trimmers, I've got an envelope punch board back there. A stamp on a jig, some rulers that sort of thing. Things I use on a regular basis. The next drawer is embellishments. And again, last year I used to have these in these kind of drawers, all in color coordinated and topic coordinated, but I have gotten rid of a lot and therefore it's all in one drawer. And it, you know, it's divided into um, little stickers and jewels, washi tape, die cuts, that are like pre-cut from, like those are Kayser Craft ones. Uh, let's see, some Australian ephemera. Um, stamps, I think stamps are really fun to use with decorating. Got some chipboard in the back. We've got some decorative brads, things like that. Some photo corners back there. Stamp and dimensionals. Uh, you know, just a bit of everything. And now the next one is alphabets and flowers. This, I, my friend Emma was uh, cleaning out her craft room and I did not have any thickers or anything and she either gave these to me or sold them to me for a song. So um, these are just great to have for scrapbooking and it's been really neat to have a play with them. So alphabets, I have my quote sticker collection here. I love stickers. Um, some, day, some days I wonder if I just have stickers because I like them <laughs> but, and not to use. But I do, I, you know, they're there. We'll see. It's one of those uh, works in progress in my life. And some flowers in the back there and some twine and that sort of thing. You know, anything that didn't quite fit in the, or didn't quite work with the embellishment drawer went down here. So it's it's all decorative stuff all together. Again, functionality. They're all in the same general location. So if it's not in there, I check down here, we're done. You know, it makes it really easy. The only exception to that for me is stamps. I've got some here. I've got some here. But with that, I actually have it all organized in the stamp catalog. So with the way that I access them, it doesn't really matter that they're separated because I access them through something that's all combined. Now, work areas here, in order to get to my markers and glitter, they're right here. And so all I have to do is turn, I can pull the whole box out. Again, these are a Kmart find, guys. They're bamboo boxes that I got in the kitchen section. They are fantastic. I've got them all over my house now. And especially with great for um, organizing like makeup supplies because they look really nice but they're relatively inexpensive for what they are. So markers are all organized and I did a lot of purging of my markers which so every time I open this drawer it makes me happy. It's great and easy to access and use. Uh, die cutting and embossing underneath and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's all in the same drawer. Again, I have these in my color catalog, stamp catalog, die cut catalog. So when I need a particular image, I'll go there because it's all cut out and I can see what it'll look like on the page and then come here to find it. So the fact that they're all stacked doesn't matter one little bit. And then the last section of my stamps are down here. These are all the ones that are in sets uh, close to my heart in the front and then stamping up as well as 
other ones that I've stored in DVD cases. If you'd like a video on that, please let me know. Stellar Crafts by Pam also has a really great video on um, her stamp storage. So if you're interested in that, that's over on her channel. And uh, yeah, it, it, this sounds pretty self-explanatory. Again, it's the same. Um, I use my stamp catalog and they're all numbered. So they're really easy to access. Uh, I just got these in December, so excited to use them. Haven't even tried them yet. These are the um, Tim Holtz uh, pad things that um, apply ink. I I've also got uh, my stamp blocks for um, unmounted stamps. So those are easy, again, easy to access. I just bring it, put it up on the uh, table when I'm ready to work. And there we go. All right, one more section and then we're all finished. We've got punches. I love my punches. They're so much fun to work with and it's nice to have them all in one place. Again, also in the die cut um, section of my catalog. I've got a few more punches in the front and in the back is just brushes and applicators. And part of the reason brushes and applicators is in that drawer is because the paint is in that drawer. So again, they're really close together. This is adhesives and my uh, Xyron sticker maker and gloss spray and all of that kind yeah, of stuff. It's, it's all sort of extended everyday use kind of stuff. You know, it's got double-sided adhesive. And as I said, the paint's down the bottom because I don't paint very often, but when I do, it's easily available to me and in a nice neat container to pull it out and work with it. It's also stamp cleaner in there with the adhesive. All right, that's my whole craft room. I hope you enjoyed going through that stuff. I hope you got some ideas for your own space. And again, if you'd like any other information about anything else that I've got here, how I did the purge, uh, that's all in the description box below. There are tons of videos, or I shouldn't say tons. There are a few videos on that. If you want to see last year's craft video, that will be linked below as well. So you can see the difference a uh, year has made and a good craft purge session has made. Uh, please check out Stellar Crafts by Pam and her video as well. And I hope you guys have a really, really good day. Happy crafting, guys, and we'll see you on Wednesday. See ya.